up guys, John Herrera here, wealth coach, business coach. Since uh, our guy Emily here wants to talk about more money topics, we're gonna talk about money, how to make your millions with multiple streams of income. Um, I feel like a lot of kids today who get out of school, who are especially creative or you know, in, in, you know, in arts, they always have a hard time understanding how to make their money work for them, how to create multiple streams of income. Also get a shift from entrepreneur mindset, but still working in the job because not everyone wants to be an, an entrepreneur. So this is what my experience I could talk about. Um, I think when I was 18 year, years old, I really, really, really wanted to leave college. I already was making money. I, was, uh, I had my ticket bought for New York because I was a you know, DJ and worked for a re record label. But what I really wanted at, at, at college, I already, I already knew how much money I wanted to make. I knew what career path I wanted to do. And I was very set on that. So if you're in college still, or if you're just you know, still fig figuring out, you really have to choose something that you're really dead serious. And usually people are not clear, clear on what their goal is. So if you have a goal, if you focus and you believe it, usually manifest. So people who usually have money, especially earning, especially the only thing that they know is right, when you get a paycheck, you spend it, you get a credit card. The only thing they know is like bank. So they put their money in the bank and they don't know that there's other opportunities to create more wealth aside from the bank. Sometimes in banks, you can actually lose money. Um, I believe there's this thing called inflation, which people are so amazed that there's something called inflation where the cost of goods actually rise. So uh, movie, a movie ticket before used to cost 20 pesos. Now I went to a movie theater. It was really cool seats though. It's 5,000, 500, but it was really cool. We got a free, you know, we got a free uh, cookie and coffee. Amazing experience. But things will cost more expensive as time goes by. You can't beat inflation. The problem with the bank is that your money will not beat inflation in the bank rate. Usually banks, you know, maybe one, two percent a year in a savings or checking account, maybe lower. Check your bank, ask them what your rate is. And what happens is the tendency is the inflation rate is higher than the bank, which there's a loss. If you don't know what, how banks make money, let me give you a 101. Banks make money on giving loans out. They use your money and charge other clients, and they charge you ATM fee and all this bullshit fees. They give out loans. So that's how they make money. Loans are six to 15%. Kind of crazy. Banks are the ones who are, you know, using your money leverage. Smart. That's why they're they're smarter than you. The way other banks make money is they also invest in the stock market, also mutual funds and other vehicles. They have professional fund managers, so they're leveraging whatever what you call the float in a bank for your money. So I think in the Philippines there's 3.7 trillion pesos, trillion, and I say trillion. That's in a savings account. If you converted that and you manage your own fund, you're the biggest fund in the Philippines. So ignorance is bliss, but I'm here to educate you and I'm here to teach you how to manage money. So don't forget, when you have money in the bank, know your numbers. What's the interest rate? What are you paying? How to find other vehicles? So inflation, I think it's two point something percent to three percent. In 2008, it was five percent because there was a, there was a you know, financial crisis. Depending, you cannot beat inflation, but you gotta be smart. So the idea is to get your money into a vehicle, number three, that performs, outperforms, outperforms the market. So what they always say is, once you have your salary, you put it in a vehicle. Vehicle can be stocks, mutual fund, UITF, I won't get technical here, but it's a vehicle. But care about what type of performance and money gives back to you. People think I should invest in a business. No, invest in a vehicle that gives you multiple streams of income. Let's say this month you'll put 100,000 in stocks. Next month you put 100,000 in mutual fund. Next, next month you put in insurance. So have a diversified you know, portfolio as well. So for vehicles, you choose, I won't get into technical, you can research that, I might do another video. But always know your performance, your numbers. People always say, yeah, real estate's the greatest you know, renting. Um, but do you know your numbers that usually 6% is the real estate return on investment on rental income? If you can find anything above 6%, that's amazing. If you can find a business that beats this, perfect. But again, I'm always trying to work less. I like being smart. I like to be lazy. I like to have money work for me. So 6% is an average. 6% uh, to 10% is good. 
They have a thing called REITs, but they don't have it in the Philippines yet. So know your performance on all your you know, stocks. It's never what the stock is. You have to check the performance, the company. And Philippines is doing so well that you can put you know, money in stock and all of a sudden, 10 years from now, it's crazy. You ever see those, those uh, infographics? If you put $15,000 into Google, today it would be $3 billion. It's, it's true, because it's the compound interest time patience. So that's why whenever you have a lot of money, you might not need that iPhone 7 or 8. Because when you are on your yacht with Elon Musk, you'll enjoy it. So you look at the vehicles, you always want to check the performance, then you build your portfolio. What is a portfolio? I used to think what a portfolio was when you know when you're an artist, you carry those stupid portfolios. And a portfolio is actually your diversified investments. It's not necessarily a physical portfolio. It's more of like in your mind portfolio. You have you know, uh, real estate, you have this. So the idea is to have a portfolio and how to balance that. Usually with a lot of people who are starting, talk to financial coach or planner who advises you and who audits portfolios. There's, you know, there are a lot of registered financial planners. Don't just talk to an agent. They don't know how to audit, make sure they're estate planning, they know how to plan, they break down taxes. Because the portfolio will really balance out your life. When people ask me what is the best way to invest, I go, there are many things uh, you, know, you have to take. How old you, you are, what type of income you want to achieve, how to design it on your retirement, as well as you have kids, you have parents, you have dependents, everything matters. You can't just invest into one stock and expect it to be uh, you know, you know, all roses. So the portfolio also has to be dependent on your lifestyle. Do you want to rent? Are you a renter? Do you buy? You know, do you need an education fund? Do you want to send your kids to Harvard? Do you want to send them to public school? That's on design lifestyle. So once you do this, you can go more detailed. This is something basic I think kids should know. Then you review every year. Sit down with a coach, sit down with a planner. Say, hey, you know, you go to a doctor for checkup. You know, but you don't want to go to someone for your finances, which is something stupid, because this, this is the thing. You know, if a doctor, you know, tells you to go to this office, he goes, "Come to my office now." People on Facebook, just tell me advice online, which is kind of stupid. You need to see your doctor, a financial doctor, review whatever's working, repeat it. So people don't know this. Actually, I posted an infographic about compound interest. Albert Einstein said it's like the eighth wonder of the world. So compound interest is when the actual unit you know, compounds to the last years of its you know, added value. So if you look at Google compound interest, if you always plan long-term, LT, time will always win. I don't think money is the biggest currency, time is the number one currency. Because you never know when you're gonna go. But I guarantee you that if you don't plan, you know, something's gonna go wrong. I'll, I'll be honest, I think it's 90% they did a study in financial literacy it's very, very low. I think it's financial literacy last month. So financial literacy is about, you know, they teach you all this stupid stuff in high school and you don't need, you know, parallelogram, Pythagorean theories. Um, but you need to know about compound interest, inflation, and the basic fundamentals. This isn't the Warren Buffett way. By the way, you gotta watch his uh, documentary. He talks about compound interest. All he does is eat McDonald's and have Coke every day. So if you like this, you know, like and share, Tag somebody you know. If you want to speak to my me or my coaches, we can do all this for you. We help you as well as you know how to plan. Uh, you know my company, Iron Plus Limitless, actually started out. We're more of a training coaching company, but we added a division for wealth coaching, kind of like your your specialty. But a lot of people needed help with mindset, and I, we felt that nine months into it, business is great. There's so many people with problems and we're problem fixers. So thank you for sharing and thank you for liking. I'll put all the details here. My graphic guy will put it down. And yeah, see you next video.